U.S. Senator James Lankford is back in his home state as the Senate is out of session this month. He visited Glenpool Tuesday and he's here with us today joining us live in studio. Senator Lankford. Good morning. Thanks so much for being with us. Let's start with the National Defense Authorization Act. You voted to support the defense bill. It passed in the Senate with an 86 to 11 vote. Explain how this impacts Oklahoma's military. So th this is one of the largest bills that we do every single year. It's about 2,000 pages, but we had weeks to actually go through this. I had probably 35 amendments total in this bill, uh, talking through different ways we can actually protect not only our national military, uh, but also what's happening here in Oklahoma. We lose track at times uh, how important Oklahoma is to our national defense. Uh, with the different bases and the posts. Uh, so we had specific sections dealing with that, but we also dealt with things uh, like a pay raise uh, for the members of our military, the civilians that work around our military. Uh, there's a section of the bill that I actually included to be able to deal with specific issues like Tinker Air Force Base, Altus and others, our National Guard, uh, but also spouses. Uh, a lot of folks retire from the military because their spouse can't get a career. I had specific amendments dealing with spouses in their careers and also, as odd as it sounds, a passport section on it. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of Oklahomans have not been able to get their passport for a while. The State Department has really botched this uh, for quite a while at this point. And so I included a new section there just dealing with passports. I know that doesn't sound like a national defense issue, but was able to include that so that we can actually track our passports. You put them in the mail, you can't actually track them. Mm -hmm. You don't know when they're coming back. Uh, and also to try to speed up the entire process, which has taken way too long now. Yeah, expand on that a little bit too, because uh, that's been a, a big issue uh, for a lot of people all across the country, but here in Oklahoma especially. Yeah, it is. Our, our office at, at, at its peak was getting 20 new calls a day just with new cases of folks that couldn't get their passport or couldn't get a response from the State Department. Uh, so we have now actually worked to be able to fix that with the State Department. They got behind during COVID. They were very slow bringing people back to the State Department. That got them farther behind. People started traveling well before State Department actually came back to work. There are now three million people behind trying to be able to just get passports out. Even people that pay to expedite their passport, it's taken 15 to 18 weeks to get a passport. Yeah. Uh, so that's that, that that's intolerable for folks. That is a long time to have to wait. The Supreme Court recently ruled in favor of protecting the right to live out your faith in the workplace. Yeah. You are supporting protections for faith-based contractors. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? I can. There's actually a piece in the National Defense Authorization also included just to be able to protect the rights of individuals to be able to live their faith in the military. That's a basic American right. And then there's also an issue separately from that, uh, dealing with faith-based contractors. Uh, during the uh, Trump administration, they made the rules very clear that you don't have to have a certain faith, change your faith, anything at all. Any faith can actually be a contractor to serve the government. This administration is shifting that, trying to be able to clamp down on contractors that are faith-based, whether it be a church or a religious organization. In the United States, it doesn't matter what your organization is or what your personal faith is, you can still interact with your own government. That's been a settled issue with the Supreme Court. That should be a settled issue for us in law and trying to be able to make that clear. And of course, we've been reporting about people across the state and country dealing with high costs of prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. That is a big issue right now. Can you break down the two bills that you introduced in June that would mm -hmm. impact that? I can actually. And, and one of the things we did was not only introduce it in June, we were able to actually get it through committee uh, just last week, actually, to be able to work through. Uh, there's several different aspects of this. One is uh, when you deal with something called the pharmacy benefit manager, that's the in between the drug company and the actual pharmacy counter. That's where a lot of the prices really rise is with that particular group. So we're trying to be able to target that particular group. They do different gaming, like they'll get the generic drug on the uh, branded, what's called tier. So when you walk into a pharmacy counter and say, I, I wanna get the generic of this, your pharmacist tells you it's the same price as the brand. And you think that's curious. That's because of this game that's happening behind the scenes. So we're trying to be able to fix that. We're also trying to be able to fix uh, actually where the pharmaceuticals are coming from. About 10,000 of our pharmaceuticals are coming from China at this point. That it really exposes us. At some point, if China decides they're mad at the United States, they could literally cut off our supply of drugs coming into the, into the country. So we're trying to fix that part of our supply chain, as well as also dealing with the pricing issues as well. With the recess, what uh, are your other plans this month? So traveling around the state, uh, been all over green country uh, yesterday, be back all over green country again today, uh, end up uh, at the end of the day today in Muskogee and just get a chance to travel around, just be able to listen. It's nice to be able to be home, not be in DC uh, for this entire month. So I get a chance to be able to interact with folks, find out what's happening uh, personally for them, uh, what's happening in the business world as well, and uh, what we can do to be able to engage in that. And things like pharmaceuticals, get a chance to be able to visit with different pharmacists and say we're halfway through this bill now. Once we're finishing it out, what are the things we've got to be able to finish? Senator Langford, thanks so much for being with you us. Bet. We appreciate it. Should have visited with you again. Absolutely. Yeah.